What's up, Automotive Pandas? Peter Von Panda here. Hey, I've got the headlights for my Plymouth Prowler, but I think restoring these headlight lenses is going to be a similar process for pretty much any car. Now, uh, in my case, I've actually removed the whole headlight assembly, which is going to make it a little easier when I actually end, you end up clear coating this transparent plastic piece so I don't have to, uh, you know, cover the whole car. Uh, but you can do it on your car. You just want to make sure that you cover the whole thing if you uh, get to the clear coat stage so that you don't overspray. So a couple of key things about this is I have some oxidation here, some pitting. I can feel it. It's kind of gritty. You know, this is just uh, age and fade and weather, and et cetera, et cetera. And most headlights are plastic. And so the yellow, I, you know, kind of miss those old school uh, glass ones. Now, a couple of things I will say is you can get a headlight lens restoration kit. And I've used those in the past. And the last one I want to say, um, you know, with my buddy, we did it. Looked great. We kind of has like this uh, clear coat white that you kind of put on and that's supposed to kind of keep the finish. But I would say within six months, it looked as bad as it did when we first started. So what I wanted to do on my prowler here, because I care more about this car, is do a little bit more of a permanent fix. So a couple things that we're going to do here is I'm going to mask off. Uh, all the painted parts. This is actually all fused together even though this is plastic and this is uh, clear plastic and they look like they're two different pieces. Uh, you know when I look in the back they're kind of uh, plastic welded together. So I'm going to mask off everything that's not the clear lens here. I'm going to use uh, because I don't think this is too bad and in fact a lot of place on the plastic is fine. I'm going to use a thousand grit sandpaper to kind of get rid of this bulk of it and then I'm going to use 1500 grit sandpaper to kind of give everything a key here on Wheel of Dealers. Uh, we'll give the whole lens a key and then we'll clean it up. Um, I'm going to remove the masking tape, kind of use isopropyl alcohol and water to kind of um, remove any uh, res residue or oil from my hands. And then I'm going to mask off the paint again. And then I'm going to use a 2K clear coat, which is clear coat and hardener, uh, kind of a little bit of a step up for us home guys than just that, you know, duplicolor clear coat you can buy at AutoZone. Uh, you know, which I've used before on other projects and it's worked well, but I've noticed that it can chip and stuff. It's just not, you know, a perfect clear coat. So we'll put a clear coat on here and that's really kind of what will prevent this from happening again, you know, at least in the near future. All right, guys. So I have the headlights taped up here. The lens is all taped off. I actually just might uh, keep this tape up here if it holds up after the uh, wet sanding because I taped it up wicked good. Now, I do have a bucket of water here. I will be wet sanding it. Like I said, starting with 1,000 grit and then going to 1,500 grit. The 1,000 grit might even be too much. I, you know, I ultimately want to get to 1,500, so I might dabble a little bit. Now, I will say uh, I am freaking terrified. Uh, the last time I worked on restoring headlights was on my buddy's 98 Corolla. And so there's a big difference between doing it on a POS and doing it on my Mopar love of my life. So, and finding these headlights is like harder than finding hen's teeth. So uh, I don't want to screw this bad boy up. So I'm gonna, I guess I'm going to take my time. Now I could use like a foam block to kind of keep the sandpaper nice and, you know, even on here. I'm actually going to do it without that. I'm just going to kind of do it by hand because I'm not going to apply a lot of pressure. It's not really that deep and not that bad. I just kind of want to get uh, the bulk of this kind of down and even so that we can get to clear coating them. So yikes, wish me luck. All right guys, good news, bad news. So I'm done sanding. Uh, I, I used a couple sheets of paper on both lenses of a thousand grit, wet sanded it. And as you can see here, they're looking a little foggy, uh, which is I guess kind of what we'd expect. Now, to be honest, I know that you can kind of paint them at this point at a thousand grit, and some people like that because they're it's got a nice key to it, a nice tackiness, so it will absorb the uh, clear coat and hold it really well. Now, uh, I am kind of bugging out right now, so the bad news is uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of really bugging, okay? So, uh, <laughs> I used to have a buddy who had a auto shop, um, one, and... He told me, you know, back in the, the day, and what I kind of remember is like, oh, clear coat is kind of like water. So, you know, if it's all foggy right now, you know, or like paint, uh, you can just kind of put water on it and that sheet of water on it will act like a clear coat. And you'll see what it's like with the clear coat on. Now, I've got some wet rags here. I'm going to just soak them again. And I'm going to run them over this lens here and just kind of wet it down. And I want you to see here. Okay, so if that's how the clear coat would work, that's not that freaking clear to me. I mean, that's kind of like uh, still pretty foggy. So I'm kind of bugging. I'm kind of bugging. Okay, so right there, again, nice and foggy, just like we'd expect. 
And now if I just kind of wet this down, uh, you know, I mean, it's clearer, but it's not like glass clear. It's kind of like dull. So, um, bugging, dude. I'm bugging. I'm bugging. So I'm going to go to the 1500 grit here and give them another pass with that. And yikes. I hope they look more like glass when I'm done. <sighs> Jeez. Let's do it. 1500 grit. Here we go. Okay, guys. So I just got done with 1500 grit. I used a couple pieces on both lenses. And uh, I'll be honest, I'm still bugging. Of course, you know, this is looking a little foggy, which is fine. But again, when I do the water test here and kind of run some water over it, to me, that doesn't look crystal clear. I mean, it's not bad, I guess, but there's just a little bit of like, I don't know what the word is, you know, it's just a little bit of like hazing to it still. So obviously that is beats the oxidation and pitting that I had there before. Maybe it's just not going to get any better. Or maybe if I use power tools to do this, uh, that would have been better. Uh, I definitely used my hand. I didn't want to crush everything, but that's what it looks like wet. And that's what I think it's going to look like when I'm done. So, uh, I guess I'm going to be okay with that. I would have loved it to look totally crystal clear. So I'm going to clean these up. I'm going to use, like I said, an isopropyl alcohol and distilled water mix to kind of get all the, the remnants, um, picked up any little debris, let things dry out, fix uh, the masking. And then we will spray it with that 2k clear coat. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm, because I, the headlight units are uh, detached from the car, I'm going to use a garbage bag and then I'm going to cut out a little piece or just tear open and mask around it. So I'm just going to mask off the whole thing with a garbage bag on both of these and then we'll get spraying them and then get it reassembled. But uh, uh, so far I'm not thrilled. I don't know. You can tell me what you think. Am I being too picky or, you know, it's, it's like there's a little haze. Son of a gun. <sighs> Come on. So the headlights are inside here drying and as you can see, uh, pretty scuffed up. You can see where I sanded them. Um, and that's why I'm bugging. I'm bugging, dude. I'm bugging. I wouldn't be bugging so bad if I hadn't wet them and they still looked a little hazy to me. So uh, they kind of are what they are at this point. I we'll let them dry and hopefully by the grace of Mandy Moore, uh, I have not ruined my headlights. But we will see. Drama. All right, guys, got my headlights set up here. Um, I'm still bugging. These are pretty cloudy. Uh, here's the clear coat I'm going to use. It's called Spray Max 2K Clear Glamour. So glamorous. Uh, I am still bugging. I hope this works. I hope I've not screwed this up. Uh, the pressure is on. And this is a clear coat with a hardener. So you kind of break the canister under there with this little plastic cap. So you put it on the bottom here and then press it on the ground to kind of bust that um, canister by pushing that pin in and then you you shake it up again so I've already shaken this up for a couple minutes I'm going to mix the hardener in there shake it up for a couple more minutes and then you also want to make sure you have some sort of respirator uh, I'm not your mama but especially uh, this kind of says like professional use I will say my plan here is to lay down four coats total uh, I don't want to lay down really heavy coats because I certainly don't want runs in the clear but I do want to try to lay down enough to get full coverage on every coat. I don't want it to be really speckled. So hopefully we'll be able to do that. Let's try it. All right, all shaking up. Oh, oh God, I'm bugging. Please be with me, Mandy Moore. Please be with me. Let's see here. Okay, so that's what it does. Mask up. Let's try it. All right, guys, there's the first coat. I'm going to wait 10 minutes to let this kind of dry a little bit. And then we'll come out and hit it with another coat. 
I guess right off the bat, I am pretty happy. It looks way better. So hopefully after a few more coats, it'll look even better. Let's wait 10 minutes. Okay guys, it's been 10 minutes. Got my mask on. Uh, I noticed that my spray coverage along the bottom was a little spotty, so I've propped up the headlights to give me a little bit better angle with some boxes here. And been shaking up my chair again, and we'll give it another pass, and hopefully maybe cover the bottom a little bit better this time. All right, that's coat number two. Wait another 10 minutes and come back out and hit them again. That's what they look like so far. Not really noticing any improvement after the first coat. Uh, I was pretty, I'm pretty pleased with that first coat effect. It certainly clears it up a little bit. And it's starting to look like glass and hopefully the additional clear will just give me more clear in case I want to wet sand and buff it a little bit later. All right, see you in 10. All right, guys, 10 minutes later, coat number three. Let's do this thing. All right, that's what it looks like. I know some people stop after three, some people do four. Since I've got them all masked up, I'm gonna do four. So wait 10 more minutes and hit it one more time and then, then we'll call it quits. But yeah, I mean, so far, hopefully the clear sticks, man. I guess that's another thing I'm kind of nervous about in the long run here. but. Definitely looks a lot better, that's for sure. I just hope, I don't think I took any shortcuts, so I'm just hoping that everything kind of ends up staying the way it's supposed to stay. We'll get back out here and try it again in a few. All right, guys, fourth and final coat. It's actually been like 15 or 16 minutes since I hit these last, but put the last one on here. Okay, guys, that's a wrap. So now I'm going to give these 10 to 15 minutes to dry a little bit, and then uh, I'm going to come out here and start taking off the masking because I don't want that to harden and then try to unmask it and chip the clear coat or anything like that. So you kind of want to get it off when it's still wet. So give it a little time so it's not totally wet and fresh clear. But so far, I'm starting to feel a little better. Obviously, after getting the masking off and just kind of taking it all in, <laughs> I'll maybe feel even better. But so far, oh, so far, Mandy Moore, you've been with me. Let's just try to bring it home. See you in a few. All right, time to unmask it. Now, a couple things I'll say here that probably goes without saying. You always want to peel away from where you've painted. You don't want to drag anything over the areas that you've painted because uh, you could um, just leave scratches and divots and marks and all sorts of stuff. And uh, so we'll do it really gingerly and try to get everything off. All right, guys, wanted to give you a final look. And I would say overall, I'm pretty impressed here. I think they look good. They definitely look better than I was expecting, kind of given, you know, my water test of clear coat. I think I did a pretty good job of masking it. Definitely the clear coat is a bit thick. Those four coats were probably overkill um you know i do have some kind of like some strange like right there you can kind of see this little spot uh it looks to me like that's on the plastic so i'm not sure if i missed something there or 
not not sure exactly what. It's not super visible, but uh, I, I'll chalk it up to being an amateur idiot. But otherwise, you know, the plastic here looks really, really good to me. I mean, you can see some spidering in there, and that is actually uh, twofold. There is some spidering cracks in the plastic, but then on the chrome reflector, there's also um, some a little bit of like cracking and aging too. So uh, you can't blame it on that. And then, you know, even back here, I think that looks pretty good. Definitely much better than I was expecting. And I guess when you call on the supernatural powers, Mandy Moore can happen. Now I will say, I, I don't know how you could take more time and be kind of more diligent than I was. I, you know, I took my sweet time doing it, yeah, but I think it looks good. I mean, this definitely looks like glass. And, you know, for uh, a part that's 20 years old, you can't expect the world out of it. But it definitely looks um, much better than when I started and as good as I would have hoped. So pretty pleased with it overall. Now, once I've got, now I've got it demasked here, I'm going to let it sit and dry and cure for at least a day. Uh, for me, I'm not going to actually try to reinstall this on the car actually till uh, this upcoming weekend. So it's going to be like four days. So hopefully that's plenty of time for it to, to kind of, really cure and get hard and so that I, when I put it on I don't have to kind of be too ginger with it. The other thing I will say here is that uh, when you put it somewhere to dry you kind of want to make sure you're putting it somewhere where it's not dusty or there's bugs or something like that and so you know even though I'm going to use it out here in my car I'm going to put it or my garage I'm going to put it on something just so I don't have any bugs or something that lands on it and kind of uh, gets embedded permanently into the clear coat. So another thing to consider you know if you uh, the headlights are on the car. You probably don't have a lot of choice. I would not park it outside while you're letting it do that. Uh, definitely, I'd put it inside, but you know, in my case, I could even take them into my basement. But still, a lot of fumes coming off it, so I don't want to do that. But uh, there it is. That's my experience with painting my headlight covers. And like I said, overall, I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. It definitely um, is a facelift for the car and it hides a lot of the age, you know, those those foggy headlights really date cars pretty quickly. So awesome. Stoked. Peter Von Panda out.